today we're going to talk about multiplying mixed numbers. Think about this. If you have five and a half times six, that really means that you're going to have five and a half six times. So if I add five and a half plus 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 five and a half. If I add all the fives together, I get 30. And if I combine the halves, I have one, two, three more. So altogether, I have 33. Another way to look at this is to think of it as five and a half times six, where you take five and multiply it by six, and you take one half and multiply it by six. That would be five times six, and then it would be one half times six. And so then I have five times six is 30, and then one half times, and remember we do six over one, and when we multiply that, we get that that equals three. So again, I get 33. Notice that five and a half times six means five times six and one half times six. It is very important to recognize that it does not mean to multiply five times six and then let the half hang off. It is not 30 and a half. Absolutely not. Again, because we have to multiply the whole number times the whole number and the fraction times the whole number. So here's a shortcut with five and a half times six. First of all, you're going to change five and a half to an improper fraction. Five times two plus one equals 11 halves times, then we're gonna write the whole number by putting it over one. That's how we make it into a fraction. And then we multiply numerator times numerator, 11 times 6 is 66, 2 times 1 is 2. Of course, we have an improper fraction, and so we need to change it to a mixed number or a whole number. 66 divided by 2, and it goes in there 33 whole times with nothing remaining. Now, don't forget that you can also simplify before you multiply. If I look at my numbers diagonal, and I see that 2 and 6 have a common factor because 2 will go into both 2 and 6. That's called the greatest common factor. I can divide both of these by 2. And when I divide 6 by 2, I get 3. And when I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. Now looking at these numbers diagonally, nothing goes into those besides 1. So I'm just going to now multiply numerator times numerator, 11 times 3. Denominator times denominator, 1 times 1. And remember, any number over 1 equals that number because this bar means divide. 33 divided by 1 is 33. So, some steps to remember are to change the mixed number or numbers to improper fractions. Then, remember, if there's a whole number involved, put it over 1. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and simplify if necessary. Let's try another one. Again, the simplest way to work these is to change our mixed numbers to improper fractions. 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus one is five, so this becomes five halves. One and two thirds is one times three, which is three, plus two, which is five thirds. Because there I am changing to mixed numbers. And then I multiply numerators and I multiply denominators. Five times five is 25, and two times three is six. So I end up with 25 sixths, which is an improper fraction. I want to change that to a mixed number. So I take 25 and divide by 6. 6 goes into 25 four whole times. 
That's my whole number. Subtract what's remaining is 1 of 6. So my final answer is 4 and 1 sixth. Now it's important to remember that you should always estimate to check and see if your answer is reasonable. So let's look back at the original problem. Two and a half, that's halfway between two and three. One and two thirds is almost two whole. So if I said two times two, I would get four. And if I said three, or if I rounded this to three, three times two, I would get six. So my answer is going to be somewhere between four and six. And look at my final answer, and my answer is four and one-sixth, and that is between four and six whole. Estimation is always a good idea, just to double check yourself. Let's try another one. Three and a half times four. Again, change your mixed numbers to improper fractions. Three times two is six, plus one is seven, and I have seven halves. One and one-fourth. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 1 more is 5, and I have 5 fourths. And again, I can multiply the numerators. 7 times 5 is 35. 2 times 4 is 8, and I have 35 eighths, which needs to be changed to a mixed number. 8 goes into 35 4 whole times, and I can show that works so you can see that. And there are three remaining, so I end up with four and three eighths. Now, don't forget, parentheses mean to multiply two. So here's another problem. Five and one third times two and one fourth. Again, I'm going to change my mixed numbers to improper fractions before I multiply. Five times three is 15, plus one more, 16 thirds. And then two times four is four, is eight, excuse me, plus one more is nine fourths. And I multiply. Now, let's look right here. I really don't want to multiply 16 times nine if I don't have to. I can, and it will still give me the correct answer, but I'll definitely have to simplify. But I can look at numbers diagonal from one another and I can decide if they have a common factor besides one. And looking at three and nine, I know that three will go into both of those. So I'm going to divide three by three, and I'm going to divide nine by three. And when I do that, nine divided by three is three, and three divided by three is one. So that gives me a new numerator here and a new denominator here. And then I can look at these diagonals as well. I know that 4 will go into both 16 and 4. And so I divide 4 by 4 and 16 by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 4 divided, divided by 4 is 1. And so when I multiply, I have 4 times 3, and that equals 12, and 1 times 1 is 1. And remember that anytime I have a whole number over 1, it equals that whole number, because this means 12 divided by 1. So I get 12 whole. A reminder to estimate to see if my answer is reasonable. 5 and 1 third is about 5. 2 and 1 fourth is about 2. Both are slightly larger than 5 and slightly larger than 2. So I know my answer should be slightly larger than 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. My answer is 12. That makes sense. It's a reasonable answer. Always estimate to double check yourself. And again, let's look at one more. Seven and one third. Seven times three is 21. Plus one is 22. So I have 22 thirds. Three times four is 12. Plus three is 15 fourths. Notice that I have parentheses around this mixed number but not around this one. That is also another sign to indicate that we multiply. Again, I don't want to do 22 times 15 if I don't have to. 
So check to see if you can simplify before you multiply. And again, we look at the numbers that are diagonal to one another. And I know that 3 will go into both 3 and 15. 3 goes into 3 one time. And 3 goes into 15 five times. I can also check the other diagonal, 22 and 4. I know that since these are both even numbers, I know that 2 goes in. So I'm going to divide 4 by 2, and that gives me 2 whole, and 22 by 2, and that gives me 11. And so now I have 11 times 5, which is 55, and 1 times 2, which is 2. And again, I've got an improper fraction. Let's stop this time and estimate first. 7 and 1 third is close to 7 whole. 3 and 3 fourths is almost 4 whole. 7 times 4 is 28. My answer should be somewhere around 28. So let's check. 55 divided by 2. 2 goes into 55 twice. And I continue my division process. 2 goes into 15 seven times, and so 2 goes into 55, 27 whole times, with one remaining out of two. So my answer is 27 and a half. And when we estimated, we said our answer should be just about 28. 27 and a half tells us we're probably right on target.